Hello everyone, my name is Raghav and I run the YouTube channel Shutter Authority. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this scene in Eevee in Blender 2.9. So it's a futuristic night scene with a lot of fog and volumetrics. We're going to be using a few models from this pack by Video Copilot. The community made this so it's free to download. And we'll also be needing this add-on to import multiple OBJs into Blender 2.8. So once you have both of these downloaded, just jump back into Blender. We're going to delete everything in our scene. Go to File, Import, and Import Multiple OBJ. Then find the folder where you have the models and select the ones that you like. Okay, the models have come in, but they're really huge. So I'm going to press A to select all, and then press S and scale them down. And then we're going to press 1 on the number pad to get in a front view, and G to bring them close to the floor. Now we're going to move these and just lay them across in our scene. Ah, Look, this one is really small. And one thing to note is that all of their pivots are in the middle. So we want them to be at the bottom. So what we're going to do is, so you select the model and then you press the cursor button and then put the cursor at the bottom. Then you right click, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. So now if you scale it up, it's going to scale from the base of it. So I'm just going to apply materials for one building and then you can do the rest. Okay, now get into the shader editor. Now we're going to link up the textures with this model. So select this material and press Control Shift T and then go into the folder that holds all the map. This model that we were looking at is Future Building 4. You need to select Diffuse and Specular and Normal if there is. If not, just ignore it. There you go. So you have all of this linked up. By the way, for this to work, you need to have the Node Wrangler add-on installed. So go to Preferences, Add-ons, search for Node Wrangler, just press the tick there. And then when you press Control shift t it sort of links everything up automatically. All right, now that the materials are linked, let's make a few changes to it. We could make it a little bit more metallic. If you make it metallic, it sort of gives it that sci-fi-ish look. Okay, I went ahead and did that for all the other models that I liked. So basically, I have the pivots at the bottom and then materials linked to it. Next thing I'm going to do is make a few low poly models. So here are some that I've already made. They're really simple. So I'm going to show you one and then you can do the rest. So I'm going to create a cube, scale it down by hitting S. And then I get into edit mode and then you go to the face select button and then make it longer. Then we can turn on the x-ray mode, select all four edges and press control B and bevel the edges. Then we can get back into the face select mode, select a few of these and inset and extrude. Make that go inwards, have this go outwards and then you can scale it on the x-axis like this. Just feel free to try different things, come up with something that looks interesting. You don't really have to spend too much time on this because this isn't going to be very visible in the final result. Okay, we're also gonna make a very simple material for this. So we'll get back into the shading mode and then create a new material for it. So we are going to plug in a brick texture into the normal map. So shift A, S, brick texture and then we also need a bump node in between shift a s bump you plug the color into the height and normal into normal and then make this also metallic and we can also darken it a bit so that's basically it a little sci-fi container home so I went ahead and made a couple of them. Very simple models again. All right, I am just gonna delete that. So once you have a couple of these done, what we're gonna do is put them into different collections. So I select all of these, make a new collection, and then call it skyscrapers, and I put them all in here. Then I made another collection and put all the small buildings there. The next step is to create a new plane. So shift A, plane, and then you want to scale it to be really huge. Something like S50. Make it a little bit bigger. S2. Now, what we want to do is get into edit mode and subdivide it a bunch of times. Subdivide, and here the menu opens and you can set something like 20. 
and enter. So it creates a lot of subdivisions. So let's make it something like 50. Yes, that looks good. Next thing is to go into top view and go to weight paint and increase the radius and just paint around this area. And you can also reduce the weight and sort of paint a few irregularities. So what you're doing here is basically painting color in a way that represents the density of the buildings. So wherever it's red, it's going to be very dense and where it's blue, there will be no buildings. So we get back into edit mode and we select our plane and let's put that outside that collection, make a new collection and let's call that city. And we are going to put this plane into that collection. Select the plane and go into the particle settings. Create a new particle system. Frame start zero, frame end one, and give it a lifetime of about 250 because that's how long our sequence is. Then you want to go into velocity and reduce the velocity to zero. Physics, set it to none because you don't want anything to move. And then under render, set it to collection. Here, you want to select small buildings. So basically what happened was you can see all these little dots on the scene. And those are all buildings. So if you scale it up, you're going to start seeing a lot of buildings. But we want to have a lot more buildings. So we're going to make it something like 15,000. Wow, that's, that's a lot. So we're going to come back and increase the scale randomness. So now it doesn't look so repetitive because it just randomly changed the scale of those. Or we also want to select object rotation because they're all otherwise not in the correct rotation. It's all probably lying flat or something like that. Okay, now if you go to look dev mode, you can see that it's just a bunch of shiny metallic buildings on the floor. Okay, next step is to create another particle system. So hit plus and with this one, you kind of do the same thing. Starts at zero, ends at one, 250 particles, velocity of zero and physics, no physics and collection. And this time you're going to select skyscrapers. Now, if you increase the scale, you see all of them on the floor lying flat. So hit object rotation. Yikes. Okay. That is a lot of buildings. So this is where we make use of the painting that we did on the floor plane. So go to vertex groups and under density, select group. So now you see what's going on. It just has the buildings placed where we painted. And again, we're going to increase the scale randomness. So now you have buildings of different sizes and it starts to look more a little bit like how a real city would look. All right, now go into the look dev mode, select the plane and press the materials button, give it a new material and make it dark. Reduce the specularity. You don't really want it to do anything. It just has to be a black thing. Back to default shading. Now we're going to create a few lights. So shift A and then create a sun. Just press one to go into front view. Press G to move the light and then R and give it a rotation. Okay, you don't really see that much going on yet, but we're going to create a few more lights. So go back into top view by hitting seven and shift A and let's create a bunch of point lights. So that's the first point light and you want to increase the power to something like 500. Now let's go into the shading more here. You select instead of object, you select world and press shift A. S principled volume and plug the volume into the volume of the world output. And now if we go into rendered view, everything just disappeared. That's because the density is way too high. And instead of just giving it a value, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a color ramp. Shift A S color ramp. Plug color into the density. And then when you increase the black point, you're going to start seeing something happen. And we can actually change that to a different color. And here we could go to point light, the light settings and make it brighter. Now you can kind of see the fog is starting to work a little bit. So what we're going to do is add a second point and make this sort of dark gray. 
And now we're going to plug in a noise texture into the color ramp. Shift A S Noise texture. You're going to plug the factor into the color ramp. Now select the noise texture and press Ctrl T. And that is going to create these two nodes, which will just help create texture coordinates for that. Now you can see that the noise is working, but it's just a little too small. So we're going to drop the scale to something like 0 0.05. And now you start seeing these patches of clouds. So the rest is to do with lighting it. And here we could actually get rid of surface. So that makes it like a dark nighttime scene. And now it's just about playing with lights and getting the kind of look that we're going for. Another thing to note is go into this light settings for the sun and reduce specular to zero. You don't want anything shiny that is sticking through for this specific scene. Okay, now let's go into front view and move this light, the point light up a little bit by pressing G. and press the period key in the number pad and you can increase the intensity of that. Now you start seeing a little bit of lighting there. We could change the color of the light to be a little bit orangish or so. And we could also change the color of the volumetrix to give a different feel. We can also play with the size of the light, make the lights even brighter, something like 3000 or even more, why not something like 10,000. Nice, that is looking a bit nicer. Let's duplicate the light lights a few times. So select the point light, shift D, and place it somewhere sort of close to the ground because you don't want a source of light just floating around somewhere in the middle of the city. Make a few more copies of the light and just give it different colors. So I'll make one of the lights blue and this one I can make it red. Uh, another thing to make the scene look a little bit nicer is to go into the scene settings and under color management select very high contrast. So this kind of makes everything pop a little bit more and if you do find these lights to be floating around you could either move them close to the floor as if it's something that is happening in the middle of the street or just put it on top of a building like it's a light that is at the tip. Also, I think we could reduce the reflections on the smaller buildings. So go in a small building and here switch to object materials and you can really drop the specular values. Even make these a lot darker because at that lighting, you don't really see all that much. Okay, so one more thing I'm gonna show you is having some of these buildings have glowing bits. So what we could do is go back to this, the collection with the larger skyscrapers, select one of them, press the period button. For this bit, I think it's better to turn this layer off so you see one of them up close. So let's, let's say we wanna have one huge building in the middle with some lights on. So let's select this one and Press tab to get into edit mode. Now make sure you have this button turned on so that you can see what you're selecting. Otherwise, all the overlays are turned off. So you wanna select a couple of these faces and go into material settings and click this little plus button and then say new. And here change from principal BSDF to emission. Now if you set a value like 25 and come out of edit mode and go into look dev mode. Oh, sorry, before doing that, you need to hit assign. And that's what assigns them to those faces. So now you have these glowing faces and you can change the color of these as well. So let's do something like that. And now you have this building, which you could make much bigger. And when you turn the city on, ah, yes. Okay, what happened here was because it's in this collection, all of those buildings became bigger. So what you could do is control Z that so that it is back to the same size. Select that one building, Shift D, make a copy of it and then move it over a bit. Let's make a little bit more space. 
bring it out and put it in the city collection. So what that does is not all those buildings are so big. So you have this one huge one in the middle. You can also notice that all of these little ones that are part of this collection have that glowing thing there. So now if we get back into the render view, we can see what it looks like. Sweet. Now let's get back into the 3D layout and just animate a little bit of a camera move. So switch back to viewport sharing, press shift A and create a camera. And then when you press zero, it goes into the camera view. Scroll up a little bit and then press N and view and lock camera to view. Press N to get rid of that. And now if you scroll back, this is the final camera scene that you're gonna render. Switch to final render. Let's turn off overlays for now. So we have this scene. I think we could reduce the intensity of the sun because I feel like it's a little bit too bright. Yeah, this looks nicer. Also, I think we could have one big light somewhere down there, which sort of illuminates the whole scene. So we could select that light, Shift D, duplicate it put it somewhere there there's already a light there quite bright but we're gonna make it even brighter so add a zero there sweet now that is a lot more light and looks a lot more sci-fi ish okay now we are gonna animate a quick camera move so let me pull this timeline a little bit higher go to frame one select the camera press I and location I and rotation Alternatively, you could just do location and rotation. So we are going to stay low somewhere like this and then move to frame 100 and move in and I for location, press N and if you go into item, you can have it tilt up and look at that building and then right click and insert keyframe. And now you see a nice push. Okay, now it's time to render this shot. So we're gonna go press this button and come over here, turn on motion blur. Under volumetrics, you can increase this to something like four or two to improve the quality of the render. And then you're gonna set an output path. Okay, now if you go here and press render animation, it should start. All right guys, that's it for this tutorial. If you wanna speed things up, you could delete a few lights and just have two or three lights, but with really high intensity and it should move a little bit faster. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in a future tutorial.